Welcome back to our channel, guys. If you're new here, I'm Andre. And I'm Lisa. I'm Lisa, and, and I'm not Lisa. I'm not Lisa. <laughs> and this week, we are going to tell you about our experience camper vanning through Europe for approximately six months in total. And this will be a budget breakdown. And right at the end of this video, there'll be some tips for every category where you can save some money. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Because who doesn't like saving money? We are Andre and Lisa, and we have been traveling full-time for almost five years. We're currently in the south of Spain with our camper van Melie. This year, we're planning an epic 20,000 kilometer road trip, all the way to northern Scandinavia, then back to the south of Italy. So subscribe and join us on our adventure. We know everybody's interested, so how, what does it cost to, to do what we're doing? I think it's important to mention a few things right in the beginning. How much you spend depends very much on the type of travel you are and how fast you travel and what your preferences are. So if you're an adrenaline junkie, you're going to go from one adventure sport to another, or you travel super fast, or maybe you travel uh, in a season where it's very busy, all these things will have a massive effect on your budget. This is early 2022, and the last two years has not exactly been super travel friendly. And that's partly the reason why we reverted back to van life in Europe. Mm -hmm. So our first experience in vanning in Europe was in 20, 20, 2018, when we did a hundred odd days in a van that was closer to peak tourist season so what we're going to do is we're going to give you a sort of a rough comparison between our experience in 2018 for 100 nights and what we did in 2021 now we've been in europe now for six months but we have not spent the entire six months in our van and we've traveled super slow mostly due to COVID, and just because this is now a full-time life for us we've been traveling together for more than 15 years and our focus is always on finding good value there's always this perception that when you travel in europe it's going to be super expensive and that's not wrong well i think to a large degree we were surprised by the fact that it doesn't need to be that expensive that that has to do with the way in which we travel like anywhere in any destination the way you travel will affect how much you spend the goal is not to go to a country and not experience that mm. country there's no point visiting a country and sitting in your Airbnb and eating two minute noodles. I think that's important. We are frugal travelers, we budget travelers, but we do not try and do things as cheap as possible. At the end of the day, the reason why we travel is to experience things. And it's just the way in which we experience it and the things that we prioritize, which are possibly different to other people. The countries we've been to with a motorhome, Italy, France, Spain, Switzerland, Austria, Hungary, Slovenia, and Croatia. Spain, do we say Spain? Yes. Yeah, and, and that's over a six month that's, period. Now we are currently living full time in our motorhome and we are continuing to travel Europe for the next year. Keep watching, subscribe to our channel. If you want to see where we're going, we're going to do an epic 20,000 kilometer adventure. So our next budget report is going to be somewhat different. Our budget report excludes the actual vehicle. Now, fortunately, we were able to purchase our own vehicle. This is a good thing and a bad thing in many ways. <laughs> Keep in mind that when we give you numbers, it's just actual living expenses and travel expenses. In summary, we break up our budget reports into the following categories. Food, which is always the most important to us and which always makes up the biggest portion of our budget. Secondly, accommodation, fuel expenses, general living expenses, our public transport, uh, toll road fees, vignettes, things like that, sightseeing and activities. And then our last category is sell and data. So we'll be going into each one of these categories in a little bit more detail, giving you the values, the percentage breakdown, and also the comparison between 2018 and 2021. What's very interesting is that spread over these three year period really, and okay. the six months mm. that we spent in the camper van in Europe, proportionally our spending from 2018 to 2021 is almost identical. However, what I found very interesting was that from 2018 to 2021, we actually managed to spend 10 euro less per day on average in 2021 due to a few factors. As we dive into every category, we'll <laughs> give you an idea why we actually spend less this time. Some of it might be obvious. But even though we did notice some form of inflation, by learning a few tricks being more experienced and doing something slower and more as a way of life one is able to make certain savings i think this is a critical thing to remember we don't all travel the same and we mentioned right at the top so it's hard to draw a direct comparison and this budget is probably more 
relatable if you are traveling a little bit longer. Mm. A little bit Nevertheless, more the, the idea is to give you some insight as to how affordable this lifestyle can be. So we don't recommend that you take these values and do your budgeting and planning accordingly. We do suggest that you have a look at maybe a few of our other videos, see what type of travelers we are, see the way in which we travel, and then structure your budgets accordingly. Whether that means cutting back because you possibly don't drink any alcohol and that could be a saving, or whether it means doubling your food portion of the budget because you want to eat out in nice restaurants. Let's start with Category one, food. You can quite easily blow your entire budget on food in week one. <laughs> and we know many people who do that. And that can be a good experience, but I think you have to balance it with the overall trip. So this is what we're going to try and do. We are not big on restaurants and we do really enjoy uh, not only diving into some local ingredients and cooking something for ourselves, but also just taking advantage of fresh produce where we are. That's not to say you should not go to a restaurant and experience something unique. In our case, because we're in a van, a lot of the time we find ourselves in smaller towns, more rural areas, and that adds to the charm of being able to prepare a simple meal for yourself using local ingredients. Now, food for us is still the biggest expense proportionally by far. In our case, it comes to 40%, 42%. 42% of our daily spending goes to food. This last year, it's sort of averaged around 16 euros per day for the two of us. I wouldn't say that's bad because you can probably blow that in one entree in a budget restaurant. I can guarantee you that we eat really well. It's important to us that we eat good food, real food. So we can't take shortcuts. We, that's partly why we also want to cook for ourselves. Now this includes all our groceries, all our snacks, all our drinks. And, and saying that we don't actually drink any soft drinks or it's mostly water and alcohol and alcohol we do enjoy the, we actually this year we haven't drank any beer really to be no, honest no hardly any beer uh, we do dry, drink the odd glass of wine mostly if in the van we'll normally have a glass of wine mm. uh, with supper we also only really eat two meals a day i should mention we do a quite a large breakfast and then we'll do a lighter supper one of the things we've actually changed in the last a uh, year compared to the previous trip mm. where we actually had we fell into some bad habits where you have a, a mid afternoon or noon snack or a light lunch and you mm. nibble it on some melon or some prosciutto with a beer with a little beer <laughs> stop somewhere for a cheeky little coffee it doesn't actually add massive amounts to your budget but we did save uh, about four to five euros per day on average compared to 2018. Mm. Food is one of the things you can really save when it comes to vanning or motorhoming around Europe. You want to go and eat out a coffee in the morning, breakfast, lunch mm -hmm. with a drink in the afternoon, plus dinner with a bottle of wine maybe in the evening. I think you can easily spend a hundred euro a day. Per person. <laughs> per person almost. Yeah. This is really a big one that's up to you as to how important mm. it is and how much you want to spend. And it doesn't mean you don't have to experience the local food mm. culture. And just because you want to restrict your food budget portion doesn't mean that you have to eat poorly. For instance, we really appreciate the fact that you get such great ingredients and produce in Europe. Familiarize yourself with local uh, eating culture. Like for example, in Italy, understand what it means to go for an aperitivo and have a little snack, or like in Spain to have tapas. A lot of the time that's included with your drink and that can enhance that experience. And a lot throughout Europe, you also have a menu of the day, whether it's in Italy or mm. Spain, even in France. And taking advantage of those cultural customs and doing what the locals do can give you a great experience at half the price. Our next category is accommodation. And that makes up 24% of our daily expenditure, which is our second largest expenditure. 2018 came to an average of €9.40 per day. Now we will say that we don't always pay for accommodation. Obviously having a camper van does mean that many times you are able to park and overnight for free. So if you take the average only of nights that we do actually pay for accommodation, we paid an average of 13 euro per night during 2021. And that was 28% of nights we spent free somewhere. Depending on the time of the year, it's a lot easier to wild camp, park up. Countries like France and Spain actually make it super easy. But come peak season, it's a little bit more tricky. And because of the heat, you also maybe want to be in the area where you have access either to the ocean or to a lake. If, if you set up and geared up to completely freedom camp, mm. then you can do it. It's completely doable you, in most countries. Yes, it's, and we'll discuss that now under mm. each country individually. As you can see, spending less than 30% of nights only for free and paying for the rest, 
I think our nightly accommodation cost being an average of under 10 euro is still very little. Let's give you a quick overview on the differences we've experienced in the last six months, uh, just in Italy, France and Spain. Yeah, we were in Italy sort of on the end of the peak tourist season. I, f I think camping spots in Italy is very expensive. Very expensive. expensive. I mean, expensive. there are stunning camp spots yeah. on lakesides and things like that, but they are expensive. So the most we paid was for two nights. <laughs> Ouch. On a lakeside spot in Iseo, I think it was. And that was about 30 euros a night. And you can stay on Ergas Sostas for free, which is remarkable. And then somewhere in the middle, you can find these municipally owned little parquejos or Ergas Sostas where they might charge you a couple of euros for some basic services. It very much depends on what you need. If you need electricity every night or you need access to a shower, then you may find that you'll have to stick to campsites in Italy, which is expensive. Sometimes you get lucky. We, we stumbled upon a very nice little spot just outside San Remo as we were sort of about to exit Italy into France. And it was so nice, we just stayed for 10 nights. It was on the water's edge. You guys can check out the video. I'll link it up here somewhere. And we also did a day trip to Monaco by, by train. But that, does play some emphasis on how prepared you need to be for that opportunity. Can you survive with electricity? How much water are you carrying, etc.? Mm -hmm. In France, we wild camped a bit less. It is possible to wild camp in France. However, mm -hmm. France has a wonderful system of really cheap airs. We found that the best way to find these spots this year was through the app Camping Car Park. We'll leave a link below. And if you are traveling throughout the inland France, you can also have a look at the program France Passion. Fr France is super, super geared for camper van life. I mean, the French are passionate. <laughs> it's, it's really up to you what you want. Mostly due to where we were in France, we sort of on the, on the Mediterranean coast, which is not that easy to camp for free. So we had a few camper breakdown issues, like mm. some of our camper gadgets packed up and we needed electricity on the other occasions. That sort of forced us to some of these paid parkings, but it was still reasonably good value. I, I really like driving through France and France makes it super easy. Thank you, France. We love you. We went straight from France into Spain and Spain is once again a country where it's super easy. If you think France is camper friendly, Spain is even more camper friendly. Very much depends on the season where you may or may not be tolerated, but generally mm. speaking, Things like availability of water and services is easy. Uh, we haven't been to a camp. Have we been to a camp? We actually been to a few like motor areas, mm -hmm. I think, like paid motor areas. Super, and free motor areas. Of course. Just plenty, outside Barcelona. Plenty, plenty of places. If you want to make the most of it, like the rest of Europe, come here during winter. <laughs> You'll find everybody in Spain for a good reason, I might say. Let's talk about Switzerland for a minute. Okay, we were in Switzerland for uh, less than a week uh, in our previous trip and we breezed through Switzerland from France back into Italy. And we managed to spend those five nights there without paying for a single camp spot and them actually being formalized camp spots. Don't tell the Swiss <laughs> that we didn't spend any money there. And they were in the most beautiful, beautiful of settings where we could go and hike and actually do featured touristy walks from there. It doesn't have to be expensive to go and visit no. Switzerland with your motorhome. No. But I think this, this shows you, Switzerland's sort of one of those, oh, it's a hell of an expensive country to visit. And we think France is easy, also expensive, but easy to do by motorhome. Can I do it in Switzerland? Yes, you can. Just remember, Switzerland is not part of the EU. Carefully think about whether your phone will work in Switzerland, for example. Or whether other, you'll just be charged like crazy. <laughs> what, other, what other implications there are. The reality is it doesn't have to be expensive. Austria, when we went to Austria, we mostly visited bigger cities because that was our first time in Austria. Like, and the cities are so beautiful. In August, it was quite busy. It was super hot. We went to Vienna, we went to Salzburg, all those beautiful, beautiful places. It was a little bit more expensive, but it was not crazy. I think we spent on average 21 euros per mm. night in Austria. If you uh, stay in the rural areas, this is it's a lot more affordable. We also went to Hungary and there we were primarily in Hungary to visit Budapest, where we stayed just outside of the city. And that cost us also around 20 euros per night. We found that for these cities, it's best to look for a, a spot uh, sort of on the outskirts, which has good access to public transport. And alternatively, like in Budapest, we were able to cycle mm. from the little camp spot all along the river to the city center. The advantage is that you know that your vehicle, mm. your camper, your home is safe mm. while you're out exploring for the day and you don't have to be worried about leaving it just parked outside of a city. Speaking of uh, visiting cities. Ooh, what city are we visiting? Ljubljana, our favorite city in the whole of Europe. <laughs> <laughs> so Slovenia has been quite a revelation. It's like this little hidden gym. We crossed 
into Slovenia from Hungary and we liked it so much. I think we spent a couple of weeks there and then we went went back to Croatia and then we came back to Slovenia. It was just so cool. Parts of Slovenia is really uh, set up for, for vanning uh, because it's probably not the most popular destination. Uh, Ljubljana, for example, is a wonderful city. They've got quite a few of these park and ride setups mm -hmm. uh, scattered around the city, which makes it quite easy for you to visit Ljubljana. There's also... Uh, a fairly expensive camper stop in Lake Blade. Oh, yes. But apart from those really touristy spots, you'll actually find a lot of municipal stops that's formalized and free. Mm -hmm. Don't miss out in Slovenia. We also found Slovenia to be a lot more affordable than most mm -hmm. of Western Europe. Slovenia was one of the few countries where we went to restaurants regularly and were able to actually enjoy uh, a lot of those nice things. We and eat as many ice creams as we possibly could in one day. If you haven't seen that video, be sure to click on that link. That explains the <laughs> food budget for that year. Mm, that might have all just been on ice creams in Slovenia. <laughs> Croatia, I was actually somewhat surprised by it because even though we were there in the off season, we found that campsites were still fairly expensive. expensive. Wild camping in Croatia is not technically legal. And it's, not, in, it's not, not technically legal, it's illegal. It's illegal. And in peak season, you will not be able to wild camp no. in, uh, in Croatia. In the off season, there are plenty of people who have made it work and have done that. But then you should also keep in mind that in off season, many of the campsites are closed and mm. there are restricted facilities available, for instance, for getting fresh water and for servicing. Also depends on the vehicle you drive. If you have a fairly compact van, you you might be you able be to stealth. get away with stealthiness. <laughs> if you're in a motorhome like us, it's a little bit more obvious. Mm -hmm. to, to sort of wrap up accommodation, every country has its own regulations and rules as to what you allow. So it, it, it does help if you familiarize yourself with it. Mm -hmm. Like for example, in Italy, technically you can park almost anywhere unless it's explicitly forbidden. You can technically sleep in your car on the street mm. in the neighborhood, even if someone doesn't like it, unless there's a sign that forbids you to do it. Category three is fuel. It can be a big expense if you're traveling long distances. Uh, try and cover plenty of countries in a short time. It can really be expensive. Unfortunately, fuel is expensive in Europe. About 20% of our daily spendings on average goes towards fuel. And this is not any other transport related cost only fuel. And that's saying we travel slow. In the last six months, we've traveled less than 3,000 kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a camper that gives you or a van, van might give you better mileage. Our camper gives us about 10 kilometers per liter of fuel. Fuel prices do differ in different countries. Like in Spain, it is a lot cheaper than, mm. for example, in Italy. We've paid up to 1 euro 65 cents for fuel in Italy. And in comparison, as little as one euro 27 in Spain. And this is now in 2021. Yeah, our next category is general, which makes up about 7% of our daily expenditure. And that comes to just under three euros per day for the two of us. Now, general category includes things like our all general living expenses. So cleaning, supplies, our LPG gas, which we use for cooking and for heating the van, toiletries, laundry, mm -hmm. more medical, daily medical expenses, as well as any other little odds All and ends that we buy. Yeah. During 2018, as well as 2021, was pretty much exactly the same, roughly three euro per day. The fifth category is public transport. Now often, even though you're traveling by motorhome or camper van, you might want to hop on a bus or a train or maybe a, even a ferry. We didn't use any ferries on any of our van trips so far. No. In addition, you might pay some toll fees and depending on which country you are in, you might have to purchase a vignette. Our total cost is about 3% of our daily expenditure, which averaged to just over one euro per day. Visiting more countries more means paying more vignettes and sometimes the vignettes are valid for a week. Um, it's very expensive. We generally try to avoid toll roads, but you actually have to balance how fast you need to travel mm -mm. or how efficient versus how much you prepare to pay for a toll. If you want to drive across France and toll roads only, it's going to cost you 100 euros, easy. But here and there, it's well worth your while paying that toll in mm -hmm. France because the detour is just, It'd never mind horrendous. the distance, it's horrendous. up the mountain and yeah. all the way back down again. And You've got to think about whether you want to spend three hours driving a short section or just paying five euros and hopping on a toll road sometimes. Michelin website makes it quite easy. You just type in your destination and your origin and it'll give you an idea of how much you should pay for tolls. You should do a comparison as to what it would cost you in your vehicle if you take the longer the detour. detour. Yeah. So that's a very good thing to use to be able to weigh up the pros and cons. Category six is sightseeing and activities. 
This only contributes about 3% on average to our daily expenditure, which came to just over roughly one euro per day on average for the two of us. That being said, this year was obviously COVID. Mm -hmm. So we did go into less sightseeing tourist attractions. We have found that if you travel this way, often you don't need to pay to experience amazing things, see amazing things. If you find yourself in a city, want to go to a specific museum or see someone exhibit, it's completely understandable that you have to pay for that uh, experience. But in our case, a lot of the activities we find is free. I remember when we were driving into France for the first time in 2018, and I just had this in my mind that I wanted to go to a specific lavender field where you had to pay an entry fee to get that Instagram shot mm -hmm. of being in the lavender fields. And we were driving towards this destination, well, we actually a day before that, and we just suddenly took a turn left and we were in the midst of the lavender fields, more beautiful than I could possibly have imagined on any Instagram photo. We are also more into boring the outdoors. We like hiking and we enjoy the beach. So these things very rarely cost money, mm -hmm. unless you're in Italy. <laughs> That's a topic for another day. Tell and data are favorite Final, category. but not the least important. <laughs> Traveling full time for almost five years. So this is something we constantly struggle with, uh, being connected. And But we figured out no matter where you are in the world, it sort of averages out. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's sort of average. And this so, is across Asia, Europe, mm, everywhere, yeah. Africa. We, we spend 2% of our daily expenditure or daily spendings on selling data. And right now it costs us less than 80 cents, 80 euro cents a day. So it's just under a dollar US dollar a day. We normally get local sims which gives us, gives us good deals and with a fair amount of data. Actually, if you're in Europe, the roaming is a lot easier nowadays. I remember we were here in 2018, we were spending quite a bit more mm. on data. Though you were able to roam, there were a lot of restrictions on how much data you were able to use in other countries. And now it's a little bit easier. There's still a lot of value in getting a local sim. So local prepaid sims are becoming more and more available, whereas previously mm. you had to always sign a contract, you maybe had to have a local passport or address. So these things are slowly, hopefully but surely, becoming easier. In Italy, we signed up with Very Mobile, which was super easy. They send you the sim card and you just do everything online. France was actually the easiest. We found a kiosk by uh, Free Mobile. It was not free. <laughs> Free mobile. Okay, I want to say it was the easiest once we found the kiosk. Uh, yes, Finding the, the kiosk, kiosk yeah. was a little bit more difficult. So Spain, we can recommend Movie Star, uh, but these are these are really more worth it if you spend a month here at a time. That was our overall budget for camper vanning six months over eight countries in Europe and averaging to a total daily spend uh, less than 40 euros per day for the two of us. And all that that really excludes is your vehicle cost, whether mm. you're renting a vehicle or whether you own the camper van yourself. To wrap this little budget up, we're going to try our best to give you a few tips on each of these categories to, for you to make the most of your motorhome and camper van experience in Europe. Start off with food. When it comes to food, as we already mentioned, food. the most important thing is to try and limit the number of times that you eat out in a restaurant. So wherever you can, buy your own groceries, make your own food, mm -hmm. do things like making a picnic and going out spending time in nature. This not only saves you on your food expense, it also saves on your sightseeing expense. The effect that this has on your budget is absolutely tremendous. Eat where the locals eat. Enjoy your food because that's one thing we really do mm -hmm. is we enjoy food. We enjoy trying different food. We enjoy trying local food, but you can do it in a cheap way or you can do it by spending literally 10 times as much and not necessarily, in our opinion, getting 10 times value worth. The only thing I can add is often going to a restaurant for a meal actually steals a lot of your time as mm. well. So especially if you visit a city and you have limited time in a location, I don't want to spend two hours sitting inside a restaurant. And this is the thing, when you sit inside, whether you're inside a restaurant no. in Spain or Portugal or France, it doesn't really Story make a similar. difference. Sitting in a local park and experiencing watching the locals walk by, watching them play the local game of is sometimes so much more of a local and authentic experience. Let's quickly talk about how to save on accommodation. Obviously, find free camping spots. <laughs> That's number one. <laughs> Uh, you don't always have to go to a campsite. We really love being in a motorhome and not a van because we have a shower, we have a full mm. bathroom with a toilet, we get lots of water, we can look after our energy requirements, we can cook, we can stay warm. We can quite easily just take advantage of amazing stops somewhere out where the municipality may make it available to us or a nice wild camping spot. This is the way to spend 
less on mm. camping. Secondly, you got to travel slower. If you're going to be into rushing through countries from city to city, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you on fuel. It's going to cost you on toll roads. You will spend a lot more proportionally. Try and find uh, little pricing apps. Right now, if you plot a route in Google, actually, you can do find fuel stations along your route and it'll actually give you the prices of the fuel. We have literally driven past a fuel station in Spain about 50 meters further and saved 30 cents, per euro liter. cents per liter mm. just because we knew which fuel station we were heading to by using that. And lastly, on, um, on, on transport, if you want to save less, visit less countries. <laughs> <laughs> because each country, their toll roads firstly are expensive, mm -hmm. and each country has different vignettes. When it comes to sightseeing and how to cut back on those costs, is spend time in nature. It's one way to really mm -hmm. save a lot of money. Visit local tourist info sites, whether that's the website or the tourist office. These places often have specials for that season of what's happening. They can often have some discount coupons, which you can use. Often they will also tell you about free walking tours, which are a great way to experience a place without it costing you very much at all. Make sure that you do your homework when it comes mm. to tourist cards, city cards, museum cards, those kind of things. Oftentimes they can be a fantastic way to save money and still see many of the tourist sites within a city, but other times they really are not that much of a saving. I don't know guys, we've got a blog and for every European country there's a dedicated country page and we do dig into every country sort of on what you can expect to spend when you visit that country. We also have some tips like these to help you make better decisions on whether you should get a tourist card, what mm. kind of transport you should be using. So I'll link down the description below to our website and then you can select the country you're interested in visiting. Then when it comes to public toilet facilities, obviously, like we said, we have a camper van, which is mm. fully self-sustained. So for us, it's not that much of a problem, but sometimes you are still out in the city for the whole day, or even if you're traveling by van and you're looking for public facilities, often if you don't find free public toilets, it's cheaper to go in and buy a quick, cheap coffee and then you ask to use their facilities is cheaper than actually paying for the public toilet. Especially in Italy. Especially in Italy. Mm. And most countries, in most places, people cannot actually say no if you do ask to use their facilities. The biggest set is you'll find a bit more resistance. Now, tip number one, if you're in a van, check out our last video or second last video on camper van essential gadgets. And the one we ended with, I'm going to spoil it. <gasps> no. Get yourself a pee bottle. Because <laughs> that allows you to stay longer off grid than you can expect. Check that video, we'll give you a few tips. Pays there. for itself within yeah. a week. <laughs> right, so last comment from me, if you want to make some savings, prioritize what's important to you. Make sure that you balance your eating out expenditures and your accommodation expenditures with sightseeing and other activities. And lastly, if you'd like to see more of our travels and how we travel Europe with our motorhome full time, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell so that you'll be notified and join us as we travel through the entire Western Europe, from the southernmost point in Spain to north of Scandinavia, Go and then Atlant. to the southernmost point of Italy, probably over 20,000 kilometers Eesh. during 2022. So as always, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll catch you next time.